All right, welcome to Tinker's Lab. I've got I've got some slides up to show you. This is all about the Radio Link BIM DB gyro, which is designed for Elvon mixing, but it also has an active rudder channel. I don't think I've ever had an Elevon only or a Delta Wing gyro that also had an active rudder channel in it. So this is going to be a lot of fun to put in a plane. Now I have already tested this out with the Radiolink SU-27 Park Jet. It has one of these gyros in it, but this does not have an active rudder on the airframe. And, um, and the flight modes with it, it's absolutely fantastic. One of the things I like about this one, as opposed to the um, BIME D, the, the BIME DB, this one, is uh, it's much lower profile. It's got a flat base, so it's a little bit easier to mount, and it has an active rudder channel. So let's go ahead and look at some of the, some of the features here. Um, multiple models, as long as you have Elevon mixing or a Delta Wing, Three flight modes, you get fully stabilized mode, you get uh, gyro mode, which is just wind mitigation, and then full manual mode. I wish all the gyros had wind mitigate, just wind mitigation and a full manual mode. One of the things I really love about the Radio Link gyros is that the three flight modes that you have are absolutely fantastic. It'll use any S bus PPM receiver. This one also does PID auto tune. So it should be able to dynamically adjust the gains on the gyro as you're flying it. I had I have not seen that before either. And again, it, it, you know, compact size. So here's a good picture of it here. Here's an image of the different diff, different types of aircraft that you can you can fly with this gyro. And uh, I'll be testing it in a wing on down the road, at least one. All right, so here it shows where everything is connected up. Your your channel one, your channel two for your Elevon, your two servos for your Elevon mixing, your ESC. And here it tells you channel one, channel two, and channel four, which are the aileron, elevator, and rudder channels. It uses a three pin SH 1.00 millimeter, which means that the, the center of the pins are offset one millimeter from each other, okay? And then the, uh, the socket for the S-Bus PPM receiver has a three pin pH 1.25 millimeter, which means that the pins are 1.25 millimeter offset. So it's a different connector on the S-Bus PPM receiver than it is on the servos, and it's different for the ESC. The ESC uses a standard servo connector. All the other channels use something different. Almost every S-Bus PPM receiver I think that I've purchased also comes with one of those, a cable with one of those connectors on it. So I've never had to fabricate a cable or buy a cable for one of my S-Bus PPM receivers for that type of connector. But look and see what it comes with before you order it and make sure that it has one of those in the box. Right here, it shows uh, outline of the airframe and where it needs to, where it should be mounted it doesn't have to be mounted there but i i always prefer to put to mount my gyro in the center of the airframe you know right at the pivot point for roll pitch and yaw that, that's where i like to put it i think that the gyro is more efficient when it's placed in that spot it also has an arrow on it that shows you which direction how it needs to be oriented for facing the nose of the aircraft so be aware of that there's an arrow on it that shows you you know which what what direction should be pointed toward the nose of the aircraft all right and and uh the ready to fly which is uh the su-27 that i have was the ready fly version it did come with the t8fb transmitter that you see here uh channel five their channels are labeled on the transmitter. So this is showing you that this pre three position switch is channel five. Channel five operates your gyro modes for fully stabilized, for gyro mode and for manual mode. And it shows you the, the position that the switches need to be in for each mode on the gyro. And that's typically, this is the way I set it up for my TX-16 S2. I set up a, I set up a three position switch exactly the same way. Here's the T8 S. I've also 
flown aircraft with the T-8S. I think that the, um, I believe the Radiolink A560 3D trainer plane came with a T-8S. So, and it's showing you here, it's got, it doesn't have a toggle switch. It has a, it's a, it has a rocker, a toggle rocker, a three position rocker switch on it. So here it's showing you the position that the rocker needs to be in for each one of the gyro modes. And on, that's also on channel five. And then they also give you information on the value range for each mode of the gyro. The, the value range for each position of the gyro it dictates what mode the gyro is going to be in. So if you're having a problem with like a multi-protocol transmitter or setting it up, you can't get the modes working right, look at your channel output and make sure that the value range on your channels for the different switch positions match up what they need to be. All right, and this one also has a motor lock switch set up on channel seven. So it's a throttle safety switch that's built into the gyro that is activated on channel seven. It shows you the default position of the switch for channel seven for unlocking the motor, locking the motor, and then also channel seven on the T8S. You can see that two positions on the rocker are unlocking the motor and only one position on the rocker is locking the motor. So I like the fact that it comes with a throttle safety switch in case you don't have the capability of programming that into your transmitter, it's already built into the gyro. And there's the value range for that. Okay, they always recommend, and, and I've seen this on almost every plane that I have that's the, you know, a ready to fly plane that's got a gyro in it. And they always recommend that you have like a 25 to 35 degree angle on it when you plug in the battery, um, when the gyro initializes. And I assume that's so that it's flying around with a little bit of a nose up attitude rather than having a chance on a nose down attitude. It enables it to fly a little bit more slowly. So I would recommend that you do that the first few times that you use the gyro until you get used to it. I always just... I just always set my aircraft flat and level when the when the gyro initializes so that when I launch it and fly it around, it's not flying in a nose-up attitude. But um, try it out both ways and, and see how you like that. If you want to reinitialize the gyro, recalibrate the gyro, you're going to pull both of your sticks down and to, to the out, so the bottom outside corners on both sticks. I've had this happen on one of the Radio Link um, transmitters. I've never, I have never had this happen on my OpenTX transmitter when I was recalibrating the gyro. But when I was recalibrating the gyro, I think maybe on the SU-27 with the T8FB that they show here, it activated, it spun up the motor for about one second when it calibrated the gyro. So make sure that we, if you're going to do recalibration of the gyro, and I do recommend you do that before you go out and fly the first time. Make sure that the prop is removed from the motor before you recalibrate the gyro, just to be on the safe side. I've only had that happen a couple of times, but um, it caught me off guard. Okay, so here's a close-up of the phase button. The phase button of the gyro, and this, this changes the direction in which it's correcting the, uh, the control surfaces, and I already discussed that, but at least... In this picture, you can see a close-up of that. It's a little tiny black button, so that's where it's located, right on the front. And it's got a label above it. Okay, so here it shows everything that's connected. And uh, I can't remember if I already discussed it, but um, the label, the first few units of this they came out with, Channel 4's label is incorrect. You're going to connect up to channel 4 the same way you connect up to channel 1 and channel 2. And if you look at channel 1 and channel 2, and the labels are correct on channel 1 and channel 2. The first pin on the left-hand side is your signal. The center pin is your voltage. And the right side pin on that three-pin connector is your ground. On channel 4, it shows... Uh, the label shows that on the left is ground, in the center is voltage, and on the right is signal. They have the, si the label has the signal and the ground wire reversed on the label. You need to connect up to it the same way on the, on the rudder channel. Connect to it the same way you connect up to, to aileron and elevator channels. Signal, voltage, ground. Okay?
All right, so we're back to the beginning. So now what I want to do is I want to bring up a video of the bench demonstration that I have on this gyro. So I've got everything connected. We're going to power it up. We're going to, we're going to test um, fully stabilized mode and manual mode so you can see that the gyro is correcting in the proper direction, that everything is working, and it, uh, the gyro doesn't do anything when it's in full manual mode. So I'll bring that up now. All right, so I've got everything wired up. I have it in stabilization mode at the moment. So if you watch the Elevon servos, the aileron and elevator servos, there's my elevator, there's my aileron, and then watch the rudder servo, there's my rudder. And now if I roll it, you'll see that it is correcting the ailerons. If I pitch it, you'll see that it's correcting the elevator. And then if I yaw it, you'll see that it's correcting the rudder. Now if I put it in full manual mode, not only will it not you know, correct anything, but you'll notice that I have a lot more movement on the servos now, elevator aileron rudder and now if I if I yaw it I don't get any movement out of the rudder channel if I pitch it I don't get any movement out of the ailerons or if I roll it I don't get any movement out of the ailerons and now I've got it back in full stabilized mode all right so there's a demonstration, uh, at least a bench demonstration of the Biome DB. You've already seen a demonstration of it in the Radio Link SU-27 part jet, if you've, if you've watched any of those videos. And uh, I'm just having a blast with it. It works extremely well. I haven't had a single issue with this gyro. It's fantastic when you're um, flying it in fully stabilized mode. But it's not too restrictive I mean you can you can still make pretty uh, tight radius turns with it even in fully stabilized mode and that's absolutely fantastic and if you have a rudder on the plane you'll be able to make even tighter turns with it with with rudder control I want to thank Radio Link for sending this for review it's absolutely fantastic and um, stay tuned for the uh, build and the uh, test flight all right thanks for watching and I will see you in the air.